Hi everyone, I'm Rinsey and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I'm back to do a new release Tuesday video. Today I'm talking about books that are coming out on Tuesday, September 1st. Holy cow, there's a lot of really good books coming out today. <laughs> when I was originally like putting this list together, I had like over 10 books picked out. <laughs> to talk about this week. I will not be talking about all of those books because I do not have the time for that, but uh, yeah, there's really good stuff coming out this week, so here we go. So first up, I have Transcendent Kingdom by Yaa Jesse, my like number one pick pre-ordered this months ago <laughs> book for this release week. So in this book, you are following this character named Gifty, who is a sixth year PhD candidate in neuroscience at Stanford. She is studying reward seeking behavior in mice and dealing with the sort of neurological behaviors in relation to depression and addiction. And this research is partially inspired by her own family life. Her brother was a gifted athlete who died of a heroin overdose after an injury got him hooked on Oxycontin. And her mother deals with suicidal thoughts and often doesn't leave her bed. And so Gifty is basically looking into the science behind all of the suffering and loss that she sees in and around her life. But even as she is turning to science to try to find some answers to the questions of the things that have happened in her life, she also finds herself kind of grappling with this desire for faith and kind of her own childhood faith and her upbringing in an evangelical type of church and kind of the promises of salvation that that brought. So yeah, Jessie wrote the book Homegoing, which was her debut novel and was extremely highly acclaimed. I love that book so much and I still recommend it to people all the time. If you haven't read Homegoing yet, please do so it will 1000% be worth your time. I know a lot of people have been really eagerly anticipating this one, including, like I said earlier, myself, um, and even just like the early reviews of this have been pretty overwhelmingly positive. So I'm very excited for my copy to come in the mail. And so if you have picked up Homegoing and really loved Yeah Jesse, then Transcended Kingdom is finally up. So next up I have what is basically my second most anticipated book for this week and that is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Sydney Green is Brooklyn born and raised but her neighborhood seems to be changing basically every time that she blinks. Condos are sprouting up like weeds and all of the neighbors that she has known and grown up with seem to be disappearing. To hold on to her community's past and present, Sydney decides to create a walking tour through the neighborhood talking about its history and some of the historical buildings that are left. And she finds an unlikely and unwilling assistant in one of her new neighbors, Theo. But Sydney and Theo's deep dive into history quickly becomes a dizzying descent into paranoia and fear. The neighbors may not have moved to the suburbs after all, and the push to revitalize the community may be more deadly than anticipated. So this book is being pitched as basically rear window meets get out. Alyssa Cole is probably best well known for writing romance novels. She writes some of my favorite contemporary romance books and I am really excited that she's writing a thriller and this sounds like super interesting. Like it's taking basically this idea of like gentrification in these major cities but putting a little bit of a horror thriller twist on it. So again like I said I'm super excited for this one and if you enjoy thrillers I think that you would enjoy this one as well. And again that's called When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Next I have Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson. For as long as ZJ can remember, his dad has been everyone's hero. As a charming and talented pro football star, he is as beloved to the local neighborhood kids that he plays with as well as to his adoring fans. But lately, life at ZJ's house is anything but charming. His dad is having trouble remembering things and is getting angry all the time. ZJ's mom explains it that it's because of all of the head injuries that he has has occurred through his career and ZJ understands that but it doesn't make it sting any less when his dad forgets his name. As ZJ contemplates this new reality that they are living in, he has to balance both family traditions and recollection of these glory days but also wondering what their past amounts to if his father can't even remember it. So this is a new middle grade book from Jacqueline Woodson. It's being pitched as being for like 
fifth, sixth grader, so kind of like that early middle school age range. Jacqueline Woodson writes some really beautiful books, so I was like super excited when I just saw in general that she has a new book coming out, but then this topic feels just so like real <laughs> and addresses things that I don't think is really talked about very much. Like there's kind of this open secret in terms of like the NFL and professional football and kind of the effects of doing that sport long term, but it isn't really in my opinion, discussed enough. So yeah, I'm kind of intrigued by this book a whole lot. So again, that book is called Before the Ever After and it is out today. Next up, I have The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Juyoung Kim. Margot Lee's mother, Mina, isn't returning her calls. It's a mystery to 26-year-old Mina until she returns to their Koreatown apartment outside of LA and finds that her mother has suspiciously died. This discovery sends Margot digging through their past, unraveling the tenuous invisible strings that held their mother's life together as a Korean War orphan and an undocumented immigrant and kind of how little that Margot really knew about her mother. Interwoven with Margot's present day search is a story of Mina's first year in Los Angeles. While she's barely earning a living stocking shelves at a Korean grocery store, she doesn't expect to fall in love. But that love story sets into motion a series of events that affects things for years to come, leading up to the truth of what actually happened on the night that she died. So this is a book told through the perspective of a mother and a daughter who have always struggled to understand each other. It looks at kind of the devastating realities of what it's actually like to be an immigrant in the United States. And it also looks at kind of like the promises and perils of the American dream and this myth that that's created of the ability to sort of reinvent yourself when you come to this country. So if you are someone who enjoys these sort of like literary fiction books that look at things like immigration but also I just general books that explore identity and family and secrets and things along those lines, then you might be interested in picking up The Last Story of Mina Lee. Next I have His Only Wife by Peace Adzo Medi. Afi is a young seamstress in Ghana. She is smart, pretty, and convinced by her mother to marry a man that she does not know. Afi knows who he is, of course. Elikem is a wealthy businessman that his mother has chosen Afi in the hopes that she will distract him from relationships that his family has deemed inappropriate. But Afi is not prepared for the shift in her life that takes place when she moves from her small town to Ghana's capital, a place of wealth and sophistication and where she has nothing to do all day besides cook meals for a man that she doesn't know whether or not will actually actually come home. She has agreed to this marriage in order to provide financial security for her mother who desperately needs it, and so she must see it through. Or does she not? So this is being described as like a sharply funny debut novel that looks at this woman who is traversing through modern life with its sort of taboos and traditions and injustices, living in a world where men want their wives to just be good cooks, beautiful and good mothers, and to be women who respect their husbands and grant them forbearance. So if you enjoy books that have this sort of critical lens on modern life, then I think this one might be up your alley. And again, that's called His Only Wife. Next up, I have Having and Being Had by Eula Biss. In this book, Eula Biss writes that her adult life can be split into two distinct parts, the time before she owned a washing machine and the time after. After buying her first own after buying her first home, she basically does this self audit and questions basically the world that she has just bought into. And the result is basically this radical interrogation of her work, leisure, and capitalism. Ranging from topics like Ikea to Beyonce to Pokemon, across bars and laundromats and universities, this is asking of both herself as well as those who are also of a similar class in what have we invested. So Yula Biss is probably best well known for writing the book on immunity, which was a combination combination of memoir and essay looking at basically vaccinations and kind of the world around people who don't believe in vaccinations and kind of why that came to be and kind of like the history behind vaccinations a little bit. And in this book, she seems to be kind of looking into her own sort of world that she's built in and kind of the structures in place that she's a part of um, and kind of analyzing it a little bit, looking at things like race and class and money and property and work and all of that stuff and kind of her own biases and the bias 
advice as a people who are probably relatively similar to her. I'm definitely very intrigued to kind of see what her sort of observations are around these things because I definitely think that as a like white woman in America there are certain things that you are and aren't supposed to have and are and aren't supposed to support with your money and things like that and it'd be interesting to just kind of see like sort of what her conclusions are and not necessarily that like her opinion is going to be the right opinion but just sort of seeing like what she thinks of all this stuff because I definitely think it's really sounds really interesting so so again that book is called Having and Being Had and the final book that I have this week is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas when his traditional Latinx family has difficulties accepting his true gender, Yadriel becomes determined to prove himself a true brujo. With the help of his cousin and best friend Maritza, he performs the ritual himself and then sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin and set it free. However, the ghost that he summoned is actually Julian Diaz, the school's resident bad boy and Julian is not about to go quietly into death. He's determined to find out what happened and to tie off some loose ends before he leaves. Left with no choice, Yadriel agrees to help Julian so that they can both get what they want. But the longer that Yadriel spends with Julian, the less he wants him to leave. So this is a young adult paranormal book that is featuring a trans Latinx boy. Adrian Thomas is a queer Latinx author themselves. They've basically been advocating for more diversity in media in general and was inspired basically by a Tumblr post of what would happen if a ghost that you summoned wouldn't go away. This book is being described as magical as well as like tender and loving. So if you are in a fan of paranormal young adult with a little bit of romance thrown into it, then you can go ahead and pick up Cemetery Boys today. So that is everything I have for you all this week. Let me know down in the comments below which books you all are excited about that are coming out today. I'm excited about so many books, so I'm sure that you all are as well. Otherwise, I will see you again next Tuesday with another set of new releases. Bye!